This game looks so much, so nice. I really like this. The details and, and seeing the the downfall here, moving and doing stuff is really nice. Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial on this uh, beginner series that we are doing here on Banished. Uh, this is a game that I played um, a while ago, really. And uh, I played for a couple of months. Uh, actually, I thought I was uh, knowing all that I, there is <laughs> to know about the game, but this was uh, yeah, some time ago and kind of forgot almost everything about this game because I played uh, for, those, uh, for those months and then um, went into other games and now I kind of need a, 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 a memory refresher so I'm planning on, on doing the tutorials again just to uh, catch everything in the game uh, maybe there is something new, I don't know and also I plan to do this series for you guys in case you for some reason don't want to play the tutorials um, here or maybe you are not on your computer and want to actually watch some videos of the of the tutorials uh, of the basics really the basics of this game so we are going to start in this episode one with uh, the first tutorial there are only four uh, so this is getting started all right welcome to banished in this game you control a group of exiled travelers who decide to restart their lives in a new land you have to help them survive. Awesome. At any time during this tutorial, you can access the options menu by pressing escape or yeah, this little button up here and actually brings the menu. Perfect. All right. Awesome. We are going to be moving ourselves. This is how to move the camera. Next, you can rotate. Awesome. With Q and E. You can also rotate by holding the middle mouse. Yeah. That's right. You can zoom the camera in and out, or you can use the, the mouse. This is not uh, insert and delete. Insert and delete. All right. Perfect. I prefer the mouse. <laughs> uh, page up and page down. I did that just accidentally in that moment. And this is good, the, the pawn of the the pitch actually of the of the camera here. Awesome. All the keyboard keys are configurable and can be modified in the options menu. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that now. Next. Now that you are familiar with the movement control, it's time to start playing. Great. The people you control need three things to survive. Shelter food and a way to keep warm in the winter. You might notice some people have this icon floating above their heads. This means the town folk doesn't don't have a place to live. All right. You can provide the town folk with places to live by building homes for them. First, select the housing menu on the toolbar. Housing menu. Next, select the wooden house or this one. There we are. And we have to drop a house here by pressing the left mouse button. Awesome. Placing a building will leave a footprint where it will be built. There we are. Look at that. And they are going to remove the trees. Yeah. They need to collect wood for the structure and stone for the foundation. You can cut down trees and remove rocks from the landscape by using the destruction tools. Start by pressing F9 or this button here. Remove resources. Alright, then we need to remove all of them in this area. There we are. The townsfolk will head to that area and start removing rocks and trees. While they are busy, you can place a stockpile where the citizens will store logs, stone, iron and firewood. Select the storage tools. There we are. And stockpile. Alright, then we need to create a stockpile here. Great. The townsfolk will move the harvested rocks and trees to the stockpile. Once there are materials in the stockpile, the people will move logs and stones to the construction locations. There we are, they're constructed. Alright. Look at them with the picks there and the axes. 
<laughs> this is so nice. While Town's person can cut down tree and move materials from one place to another, some shops require specialized workers. In the case of construction, you'll need to assign builders. Let's assign them. There we go. Look at this. Up here now. The things. Alright, we need to assign uh, by pressing the arrow up. Alright, two builders here. Awesome. The builders can now begin construction on the house. Just one house is enough though. You'll need three more houses to give the other family members, the other families, a place to live. Once again, click on the housing tool. Alright, let's go to the housing tool. We need to rotate this. Ah, right. We can rotate by pressing D and R. Actually, the house where they want to be. There we are. Put one there. And we put another there. And another one here. It's awesome. Place one more house if you want to change the look of a house. Ah, press F. Boom, boom. This is really nice. Just go with that one. Maybe it's the same one as this. <laughs> I don't remember. All right. Sometimes it takes a uh, it takes a while for the people to do all the jobs that you have assigned. If you are in a hurry, you can change the speed of the game. All right. Let's just do that. F1, and we can place just place four. Okay, click four on the keyboard. Try getting used to modify the game speed. Yeah. Just try doing that. Pause. Play. Five. There we are. Awesome. We need to wait for the guys to build all the houses now. It seems. And how the things go. Stockpile is, is really getting getting filled now. Awesome. A lot of rocks there. This game looks so my so nice. I really like this. The details and, and seeing the the townsfolk here moving and doing stuff is really nice. Alright, let's just see how how these houses are going to be constructed now. <laughs> there are some some deer here, some bambis. I guess we, we are going to be able to hunt them. At least from where I recall, we have like a hunter lodge. Hunter cabin or something. Alright. Yeah, that's nice. I guess it's the same one. We created two that are the same. There we are. Great. You have built houses for all the townsfolk. That may have seemed like a lot of work for a few houses, but now you know how to build anything. Awesome. To build any structure, place a building footprint, the citizen will clear the area and then collect enough resources to build the structure. As long as there are citizens assigned as builders, they will take care of the rest. Great. The people are going to need food, otherwise they'll starve. They can acquire food in a variety of ways. They can hunt, gather, and fish, plant crops, and uh, grow orchards or rice livestock. If the people are close to starve each other, the hunger icon will appear above their heads. Since this is, since this town is near a river, this is way to quickly generate food. Uh, food is to build a fishing dock. Select the food production from the toolbar by pressing. F7, let's just go with F7 now. There we are. Ah, great. Place it there. Fishing dog must be placed on a river. The yeah. Most people produce food or other resources require workers. Okay, we need to assign workers. Fishermen. How many? Four fishermen. One, two, three, four. There we are. You may notice this icon above some of the citizens' heads. Yes. This means that the workers you just assigned don't have a place to work. As soon as the fishing dock is complete, they'll start working there 
and the icon will disappear. Awesome. Any window in the game can be moved around by clicking on the title bar. You can also close a window by pressing the X button. Okay, we need to wait F1 for. Ah, we also have a uh, 10. 10x. Just go with 10x. A <laughs> full speed. <clears throat> nice. If you build roads, people will move slightly faster as they move from place to place. Place roads by first selecting roads and bridges on the toolbar by pressing F4. Alright. We are, we have one here. Uh, we need to put it like over there too. Alright. Using the mouse, click and drag from one end of the highlighted area to the other. So I can do thread. Ah, there we are. Awesome. The same builders that construct buildings will prepare the road for use. After they perform construction, the townsfolk will move faster when traveling on roads. As the tank grows and workers produce food and other resources from many locations, it's useful to see an overview of what the town has available. This information can be found using the overview tool. It can be found in the tools menu by pressing F2. There we are. Newsbury. There are citizens without homes. Look at three of them. In the overview, you can see the amount of store construction materials, food, firewall, clothing, and tools. You can also see the current population, overall health, hearts. There we are. Uh, happiness and the current weather. Great. When food and other consumable goods are produced, they need to be stored somewhere. Until now, the people have been placing everything in the cart. This one. Yeah. Uh, you can place a storage barn that can hold more. Start by selecting this one and then storage barn. Great. You can rotate the building, yes. Cannot place it. <laughs> there we are. It needs to actually be in, in, in a specific position as the tutorial wants, really. If you look at the overview tool, you can see that there aren't enough logs left to build the storage farm. You'll have to cut down more trees for construction to continue. Select the remove resources by pressing this one, and then harvest trees. Alright, we need to harvest all of this. Like this. There we are. The people also need a way to stay warm in the winter. The easiest way to do that is to cut logs into fire into firewood. To do this, you'll need a place to for a woodcutter to work. Start by selecting resource production woodcutter. Ah, great. There we are. If the townsfolk are in danger of freezing to death, this cycle will appear above their heads. If they are overly cold, the people will return home or go to the closest warm building they can find. This icon also appear over homes that don't have any firewood available for heating. Yeah, this one. Okay. Now wait until... Now wait while the storage barn and woodcutter are built. You can use the time tools to change... Yeah, blah blah blah. There we are. Let's just go to 10x. And see our little townsfolk here doing this stuff. This is the maximum uh, zoom that you can get. And just, just play with the with the pitch here. I actually really like this one. Is the 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 closest to the to the ground, I guess. Then you can watch it from from. This is the maximum also from from up. This is the closest to the ground like that. There we are. Look at the bar. And I remember playing this game uh, a lot, and uh, but I've never spent too much time actually watching the details of the town. I guess I'm going to be 
kind of taking it easier now and, and trying to make beautiful towns. I will kind of put some emphasis on that in my in my uh, let's play that I'm going to begin after after we play the tutorials here. Look at that. You can always assign workers by using the professions tool, but you can also change the number of workers when examining the details of a structure. Click on the woodcutter building to view the details. There we are. Assign one woodcutter by pressing the up button. This does the same thing as changing the number of workers using the profession tool. A worker will now start producing firewood. He or she will move logs from stockpiles to the building and cut them into firewood. The rest of the town folk will use the firewood to heat their homes. Awesome. Now that the storage barn is built, the guard that the people arrive with is no longer needed. You can remove it and anything else you build using the destruction tools. Yeah, okay. We can destruct the guard. Alright. Goodbye, guard. The workers will remove the inventory from the cart and then move it into the store van. Alright, they are intelligent. <laughs> There's a girl, the good cutter. Awesome. We can use the time tools to change the game speed while we wait. Alright. Just do that. There we are. With some maintenance and a little luck, a small town like this will survive for many years. The children will grow up, become workers and have children of their own. New houses can be built and the town can continue to expand. Awesome. If at any point you need help with something in the game or a description of how to build things or how a building or tool works, you can refer to the in-game help. I, I usually like to, to read things that are not there. <laughs> Alright. Help. Great. You can read some of the help references or print next to play the next tutorial. No, we are not playing the next tutorial now. Alright guys. Perfect, we have some stuff. So for example, let me see if I want to learn about citizens. Uh, shelter, health, happiness, warmth, education. Educated citizens receive a productivity bonus at any job they perform. Educated foresters, for example, will produce more logs per year than uneducated ones. And educated gardeners will find more food, blah blah blah. The initial settlers were educated in their homelands. Second generations will require a schoolhouse to reach maximum output levels. Alright, so actually we need houses uh, and schools too to get like uh, good workers here for our colony. Alright guys, there's nothing else I can do. Uh, actually, yeah, I can move this. Can I close this? No. Actually the tutorial um, kind of lets you do just enough and doesn't like to do more than what it says. <laughs> Alright. Guys, this is going to be the end of this first tutorial. We need uh, three more to go for the basic guide. And um, after those, we are going to start a let's play on this. Kind of easy. Uh, the first kind of... I'm not a noob on the, on the game, but actually kind of a really easy one to see what we can do and kind of get the feeling of the game. But this is going to be all for today. We are going to see each other in the next tutorial two of this basic guide on Banished.